Hey everybody, this is Bill with iRide RV Adventures. Boy howdy, let me tell you, it is cold today. Uh, it's Sunday, and uh, whew, man is it cold. Uh, I got the car warming up here, I'm gonna run down to Sonic here and get me a double cheeseburger. Um, <laughs> Cause I just didn't wanna eat taco soup for the third time in a row. <clears throat> but don't tell my wife I said that, okay? Anyway, um, we had some really rough weather uh, yesterday evening, um, uh, last night, all through the night, had freezing rain, had a couple of major pileups, I guess, on uh, the local interstates in the area, So, uh, and we even had one fatality. Yeah, we had one fatality last night. It was a rough night to be out on the roads. Uh, so anyway, it's, uh, I'm praying for the family that, uh, that uh, had the loss, and uh, I hope that uh, everything works out well for them. Uh, it's a very, very tough time indeed. I always hate to hear when things like that happen. Uh, it just isn't fair. It just isn't fair. That's all there is to it. But anyway, let's, uh, let's talk about the, uh, our uh, project here. Um, we've uh, got a little bit more accomplished, and I wanted to give you a quick update on what we did. So uh, let me um, switch hands here. I'm holding the camera with my left hand, and that's not my favorite hand to use. Switch over here to my right hand. Apologize for the bouncing around there a little bit. And uh, you can see the ice on the car. <laughs> I got it warming up and got the heater going so it'll clear the windows off and stuff. And you can see the ice on the van. That's my tow vehicle, by the way. Anyway, uh, I think the roads are fairly clear now and I'm not going very far. I got a Sonic fairly close to me here. So anyway, we got some th stuff done. Uh, and I uh, just wanted to show you what we have done here. Uh, as you can see, we got uh, practically all of the insulation up. And uh, on the walls anyway. We still have yet to do the ceiling, but that's, uh, that's another project down a little bit. And uh, I wanted to point out uh, what we did. What I have left to do, you see this area right here. This is where uh, a wire comes down to the clearance lights on top of the uh, fenders. And uh, what I had to do there, I cut, a, I cut a one inch thick piece of styrofoam right here. And in order to give this wire room to run, I've got some half inch that I'm putting in behind that and that will still give it room to, uh, to, to be in there. Uh, the way they ran it, they didn't run it. If they would have run it straight from the top clear to the bottom, it would have been easier to do. I could have used one inch everywhere, but because of the fact that it's not straight from the top to the bottom. It creates a little bit of an issue. Uh, I had to do something similar back here at the very back. Uh, you can, if you can see it there close, see that blue tape is holding a piece of half inch. Now there, I had to cut a one inch just over so far and then put on a layer of half inch uh, that went clear down and there's a wire coming out right there, as you can see. So I stopped the uh, first layer, uh, or I let the, the, the first layer go all the way through because the half inch cleared the wire and then, uh, and it goes clear down. But then I came back where I could and put a second layer of half inch on top so it come out even. But I'm going to have to leave that cavity open from there on down to give that wire uh, room to run and not take a chance on it getting pinched. But it's a really cold day today and you can come in here and, and you can uh, touch the wall here, touch it there and then touch it down here uh, and there's uh, there's hardly no difference whatsoever in how the temperature feels from one to the other. So as far as radiant temperatures are concerned, uh, the half inch it's doing its job and it's not like, you know, we have areas like that everywhere, it's just here and there. And here again on this side, I've got the same issue where I had to run uh, one inch just so far over into that cavity, then allow room for that wire, but I still have yet to put a a piece of half inch will run the full length of that, of the styrofoam, and give that wire room to float in there. And uh, I'm a little concerned about that. I will, after I put the half inch in, I will cut small blocks to go on either side of half inch to kind of create a channel of sorts for this wire to run down. But I don't want to take a chance on getting it pinched or anything like that. So anyway, that's what we did there. Now you remember we talked about how I made these, uh, these little studs that would go where uh, a seam is on the outside, uh, on the outside uh, paneling, on the outside uh, skin. And uh, so what I did, I put them on either side everywhere 
where there's a seam and you see a full set of those going down here uh, here's another full set going here and then we've got an area here uh, next to the window where the seam actually did not come out right on the stud they actually overlapped it over here so I cut a wider piece here and put it there now what I did when I made these studs I, uh, I and here's a, an example of one when I made it and I took a two by six and ripped it down uh, one inch at a time which ended up with uh, inch and a half by one inch studs and then what I came back and did I cut a chamfer on that inside corner like that you see that chamfer there a 45 degree chamfer and when I laid these up in here you see that chamfer let me see if I can turn this around you see that chamfer there that's right there I laid on a bead of Lexel all along that chamfer and then when I put that up against there it acted as a, a seal you know between here and the stud and gave me uh, that much more insurance as far as uh, water working its way through the seams on the outside of the exterior uh, skin and I did that everywhere where there's a seam. Every single place where there's a seam, is that's what I did right there. Uh, cutting that chamfer and then filling it with Lexel. You know, covering that chamfer with Lexel. And also put a bead of Lexel here as well. And Lexel also acts as a glue. And then I stuck these pieces in here and laid them right up against that. And the Lexel is an excellent glue. Uh, it's like $9 a tube. And it's, uh, you know, in one of my previous videos, I called it a silicone. It's not silicone. It's an elastomer. It's an elastomer type uh, sealant and uh, pretty much turns into a rubbery substance that is almost impossible to get off after it sets up. Uh, you can try to cut it with a razor knife. <laughs> the blade just blade doesn't cut into it at all. It just kind of rolls off of it. It's, it's kind of weird how it works. But, uh, you know, once that stuff is there, it's there. Now, in retrospect, if you remember, uh, in my earlier videos, I showed where I had taken the screws loose on all the exterior seams and ran the Lexel in between the joints on the exterior and then put the screws back in uh, to help, uh, as, as far as water is concerned, getting in between the seams. Um, in retrospect, now that I did this, this here, I probably wouldn't have done that on the outside had I have realized I could do something like this on the inside because this pretty much serves the same purpose and uh, so you know there was some time wasted by doing that on the out exterior as well as <clears throat> a little bit of money uh, but anyway now I've got double insurance but I really think by doing this this serves the purpose every bit as good if not better than doing the exterior like I did in one of my earlier videos now you see right there you see those backing plates those are the backing plates that we installed I made one half inch thick panels and those are the backing plates that I installed uh, there and uh, those will uh, give me an area uh, once I get my interior skin up and the beadboard up and all that and that will give me something to screw into to mount the uh, mount the brackets uh, for the uh, flat screen TV that's going to fit on that wall also, you see all along the wall here, you see backing plates running all along the wall, all on the bottom, and they go in behind that chair, of course. And uh, this is where the hot water tank's gonna go. This will give me some good meat to screw into when I mount the clips that holds the PEX pipe plumbing that'll run all along this wall, cause it's gotta end up up here where the hot water tank is. And also, for good measure, I also ran more backing plates all, all the way around the corner and clear up to right there, you see it. And then I also came over here and did the same thing. Pretty much matching it is what I did. Pretty much matching it. Now there is a larger backing plate right there and that's next to the side door. That backing plate is where we're gonna have an exterior 120 volt uh, plug. Uh, so we can plug stuff in outside the trailer. And again, here's this backing plate up here. This backing plate above the door here is where we will mount on the exterior, mount a, uh, uh, a motion sensor uh, porch light and then uh, in addition to that we've got one right there that will be for the back door as well we still have some little cavities here and there that we have to fill this is C channel around the door and it's hard to get uh, styrofoam in there and make it you know because you can't slide it all the way in and over because of the C channel coming all the way around on that so uh, we'll uh, probably 
end up, uh, it's not my first choice, but we'll probably end up cramming uh, fiberglass insulation in those cavities there as we start to put the plywood up. Let me pull this door to, and maybe that'll help with the light. Plus it'll uh, help with the temperature too. Maybe you can see the C-channel a little bit easier now. Yeah, that's a little bit better now. Okay, so um, this is what we've got. Uh, hanging up the, uh, the uh, one inch thick uh, styrofoam was not uh, difficult at all. Um, I've tried to cut them as tight as I could. I used my table saw to cut them and it cut it like, uh, like hot butter. You know, of course it would. And uh, anyway, I set up my fence and everything and everything just worked really good. I cut them as uh, fairly tight as I could. Most of these are staying up all on their own because I tried to cut them as tight as I possibly could. There was a couple of them there that I had to daub a little bit of construction glue on the back and I used uh, that $2.50, uh, uh, well here's a tube of it right here, just regular uh, heavy duty uh, liquid nail and it works great. And you just have to daub a little bit on it here and there and then uh, you know work, you know hold on to the uh, the uh, styrofoam a little bit, press it up against the wall, and in a, in a couple minutes or so, it starts taking hold, and uh, and there you go. Now, up here also, if you see this backing plate, that's where we will mount the hundred amp uh, service panel on the inside, and directly below it, this backing plate you see down there, that's where the fifty amp uh, service uh, inlet will will come in from the outside. And here again, I did this so I'd have some good meat to screw into so I could run some one inch screws through that and hold it really good. Now, one thing I wanted to mention about, uh, I mentioned earlier when I, the way I made these panels, I made them with uh, half inch plywood, cutting the sheets in half and gluing them together to end up with a one inch thick board. And yes, I used tight bond uh, glue, regular, uh, and it's you know one of the best uh, wood glues out there, of course, uh, to glue it together. Well, the first panel that I tried gluing up like that, I uh, used basically a brush and brushed it on and then pressed them together and uh, it didn't work, uh, it didn't glue well. So what I ended up doing, being an old flooring guy, I went and got me a, uh, a 1 16th inch notch trowel, which is a very, very, very fine notch. It's what they use on uh, installing some hardwood. It's a very, very fine notch. It's a little square notch, little bitty, 1 16th. And I actually spread the adhesive or the uh, tight bond with that uh, trowel on one piece, laid the two together and screwed them together and, and let it set overnight and then took the screws out. And so if you end up making yourself some backing plates, if you end up doing something like this in strategic areas in your trailer, uh, when you're doing your conversion, uh, you know, go get you a trowel. Uh, it used roughly a, about uh, one quart for a full four by eight sheet. By the time I ripped it in half and then glued the two pieces together, one quart uh, pretty much did it with that very, 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 very fine notched trowel. And you can pick them up at Lowe's and Home Depot for around four bucks. You know, it's not that big of a deal. Um, one other thing I want to point out that I'm going to do up here on the nose, you see those... Uh, plywood pieces there, that's three quarter inch plywood standing there. And that was done at the factory because we have the uh, diamond plate on the outside that runs all the way up the nose. And they installed that there to, uh, to have something to screw the diamond plate in on the outside. Well, it's three quarters of an inch and of course and your studs are one inch thick. So what they did when they came in and put the interior uh, plywood on, the interior paneling, they made these little strips out of these, I don't know what this stuff is, but that's what they made them out of and uh, stuck them up there. Well, I'm going to rip all them off and I'm going to get some quarter inch plywood and rip it up and uh, have full quarter inch plywood running all the way up. So that will be a full inch thick before I start laying up, uh, putting my, uh, my, uh, <clears throat> my three eighths uh, interior plywood back on the walls. So anyway, this is where we are now. It really didn't, I think we ended up using like six, no, seven. We used seven sheets of uh, the one inch thick to do, and this is a, 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 a seven by 16 trailer. We used uh, seven sheets of the one inch thick, I believe. And, um, and we used uh, one sheet of the, uh, of the half inch thick. And I'm going to end up with about a third of that sheet left of the half inch thick is what I'm going to end up with left. 
Now, these studs that I made, again, what I also did, I did the same thing underneath each window, only that, you know, I, I went ahead and put uh, Lexel on that chamfer, and then I pressed it in like that up underneath the window, up underneath the window frame. Now, these windows were installed at the factory, and so they actually framed them out with the same stud material before they mounted the window. But uh, I did that again underneath each window just for a little bit more insurance when it comes to water, you know, uh, getting in. Now, you know, a lot of people said, well, if I would have found that I had water coming in between, I would have taken it back to the manufacturer. I would have done this. I would have done that. Well, here, here's the thing, folks. Uh, when you buy a cargo trailer, and if you're just going to use it for hauling cargo, and it's already got the skin on the inside, you could have a little bit of water coming between those seams, and you'll never know it. Because it's not like it's gushing in. It's not like it's gushing in. So it may never rear its ugly head till maybe 10 years down the line. You may see effects of something like that 10 years down the line. But I can pretty much guarantee you, if you have a, and my exterior is a, you know, where all, where all the panels are screwed on. I didn't go with the screwless exterior. You can go with uh, where the all panels are screwed on and they that literally run a screw in between every seam. Uh, they also put a screw in every stud. Then they're semi-screwless where they only put screws where the seams are in the paneling. And then there's screwless exteriors and um, there's no screws at all with those. Now what they do on the semi-screwless and the screwless is they use a very, very powerful adhesive that adheres the two metals together, whether it be going up against the stud or where they have a seam. Now if you want to pretty much eliminate leaks, go to a screwless or semi-screwless exterior uh, because that sealant they use is so powerful. I was told by one salesperson that if they ever have to make a repair on that, according to the manufacturer, uh, rather than try to pull that paneling off because it's almost impossible, the exterior skin, they recommend just layering another piece right on top and going on. Say if someone went out and ripped a hole in the exterior skin on a screwless exterior. But keep in mind, if you go with a, a semi-screwless exterior, you're still going to have screws where every seam is in the four foot wide sheets that go down the side of the trailer. And that is where the water can get in between because there's no gasket there. There's no nothing like that. It's just simply two pieces of metal that are overlapped roughly an inch or so and then screwed as a screw running through the center of it. You know, water has a, fine, has a way of finding its way in. So, you know, if you, you know, like I say, again, those kind of leaks you may never even know you have. But I can pretty much guarantee you that... Uh, Somewhere down the line, uh, a trailer that is made like that, which is the way mine is made, if it's not leaking now, it will develop some leaks later on because there's no gasket there in between there. They simply just screw the two together. And you put two pieces of metal together and you don't have them really good and sealed in between each other, eventually water is going to find its way in. That's just all there is to it. So anyway, uh, this is where we're at. Uh, we're excited again about everything. As you can see right here, I've got... Uh, those uh, little short studs underneath the window there and I did the same thing with the Lexel there. Uh, <clears throat> fortunately, uh, you know, I've got the main wires that run underneath the trailer, you know, that come up to the signal lights and all that stuff that you see here. But there will be a, a, a cavity here left open even after I put the uh, ceiling on. There will be a cavity there in the corner where I can get to all the wires that run down uh, around the edges of the trailer here. Um, and I'm still working on a way to, uh, to have a cavity and then have that cavity insulated too at the same time. So anyway, but the next step now is to, uh, lay up, put the plywood back in that came out and, uh, then we can start, uh, building the benches down each side. Uh, my wife went along here and she made marks on the floor, marking where every backing plate is and what that backing plate is for, because once we cover all this up, we won't be able to see it no more. So she did that everywhere. You can see where she went through there and made all those marks uh, doing all that stuff. But uh, it's coming along. Uh, it didn't take long to do this part. Uh, it was fun, uh, exciting. I will recommend uh, when you're cutting this stuff up, wear a mask. Get you a mask and don't get those cheapies that just have the one little rubber band. Get the good ones that have two rubber bands that hold it on good and tight because uh, this stuff, when you cut it, you know, it, it, I was afraid it would have big old large beads that would float around everywhere, but no, it's small. It's, it's almost like sawdust, but man, that stuff can get into your nose and stuff and it's irritating as all get out, believe me. So get you a mask when you start laying this stuff up. 
Now the stuff, the insulation that I bought, I got it at Lowe's. Uh, the blue stuff, it's rated at five R's to the inch, and this is one inch thick, so it's five R's. Uh, and it was uh, like sixteen dollars a sheet. Uh, Home Depot had one, uh, the pink one, <laughs> and it too is rated at five R's to the inch. Um, four bait sheets and it was uh twenty dollars a sheet so i got the stuff at lowe's instead is what i did but like i say all i've got left to do is do some half inch right there to allow enough room for that wire to still float inside there and i got to do that right there and then we're ready to start hanging the interior skin back up the skin that came off but uh anyway we're excited about this i've had a busy morning already uh, tell you briefly what else I do and what we're planning on doing while we're traveling. Um, I'm a, I play music semi-professionally and uh, uh, I'm not a rocker, although I do uh, do a lot of uh, early rock and roll songs. I'm not country, but I do a lot of country songs. I'm not folk, but I do a lot of folk songs. The difference is I do them all in my style and lots of times when folks hear the music that I play, um, they don't realize uh, where it originally came from. I'll do a Johnny Cash some, some, sometimes songs, that's Johnny Cash song sometimes, and people say, you know, uh, act like they never heard that song. And who did that? And I'll say it was Johnny Cash. Oh, yeah, you know. But anyway, that's what I do. And my favorite venues to play are music festivals, upscale farmers markets, upscale uh, restaurants, things like that. More emphasis on those type of uh, venues and less emphasis on bars and clubs. I used to play in bars and clubs, but I don't anymore. But anyway, uh, I shot this video. I'm getting ready to shoot a new vi new music video to put up on my music YouTube channel. And I'm gonna post a link uh, in the description of this video. And if you wanna check me out over there and see what I'm doing over there, but that's what we're planning on doing when we travel along the Gulf Coast and down through Florida and come back up the East Coast is uh, find places where I can go play like that because I just enjoy it so much. But uh, anyway, I'll put a description in there, check it out, and, uh, and, uh, and we'll talk later. But uh, anyway, uh, as soon as I get this done, I'm going to run and <laughs> go get me a cheeseburger, and then I'm going to come back and uh, shoot, a, uh, shoot a music video for my other channel. And uh, hey, I guess I'll talk to you again in a week or so. Y'all take care. This is Bill with I Ride RV Adventures, and we'll be talking to you again soon. Y'all take care. Uh, be safe out there if y'all are having the rough weather that we're having here. Be real careful. Uh, and oh, one more thing. Uh, <laughs> last time I talked, <clears throat> we had uh, uh, between 400 and 450 uh, subscribers. Now we've got, <clears throat> if we don't have 550, we're real close. I haven't looked today to see where it's at. But uh, man, that's just so exciting. I am so so uh, appreciative of uh, everybody that's showing an interest in what we're doing. So uh, anyway, I hope that I keep these videos interesting. I hope uh, even if you don't, I don't expect you to, like I've said before, I don't expect you to do everything that I do. I'm just showing you what I'm doing and explaining the reasons why. And if you can use some of this, that is awesome. But anyway, uh, we'll be talking to you again. Y'all take care and here again, let me say this one more time. Be safe out there. Take care. We'll talk to you later. This is Bill with iRide RV Adventures. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.